Hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money, the base, on your mind, or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. This is a funny version of uh, one of these songs you'll hear later. I hope it's not too loud, but here's the uh, what the word looks like in, in here. Kragma. And no one buys or sells without the money, the beast. And... Uh, the Greek English lexicon shows you that it really means money or the impress on the coin. And this is that chop suey by uh, Richard Cheese. <sighs> well, whatever. So let's see what's been going on in the world. Got the world papers over here. There's a good picture in one of these newspapers. I think it was the New York Times. And this was in like St. Patrick's, St. Paul's Cathedral in London. This um, Occupy business. I don't know if they're still out there or not, but the church was trying to kick them out. But um, that's what we really need to do is abolish money. And um, yeah, this Occupy thing, this is from October 29th. I don't know, I didn't show it, I don't think, but uh, this Occupy thing is, seems to be kind of dying out. The website, though, is very popular. And uh, there's people are trying to introduce stuff about this 9 11 uh, business, you know, the airplanes going into the Pentagon, which seems so ridiculous. The Pentagon is supposed to have all this high tech stuff, you know, they, they have these recruit, recruiting videos on TV and they show all these guys behind these computers watching radar and they apparently couldn't track this plane and shoot it down that was heading right for them. I mean, what kind of uh, military do we have that allows this to, ha to happen? But there's really, I mean, you can, not only that, but there's cameras all over the place, uh, video cameras. There was some at a gas station nearby and it doesn't show the airplane crashing in there. And a lot of the Pentagon had videos all over. I mean, it's the they don't want anybody sneaking up there and breaking in, so they've got video cameras everywhere in front of the Pentagon. And uh, yet there's no videos of this airplane crashing in there. They have like a dumpster out front, and they were doing construction just before that plane hit. They were refurbishing this wing of the... Pentagon with heavy reinforced windows and stuff like that, and it's kind of, it was kind of like a test, actually. And I've heard that inside that area they had these, it was the auditing department of the Pentagon. It's kind of convenient. They destroyed all the evidence there of any kind of crooked business that the Pentagon is up to. It's kind of like these um, homeowners associations I belong to. It's, they give you their budget, and it, it just doesn't seem very, doesn't seem right. Here's this uh, Sycamore Vista Unit 2, there's a few houses there, so this one doesn't really show you the whole crookedness of this thing, but they've got 32000 to play with. Now this this HOA, it's Unit 5, has uh, 260 vacant lots, and uh, last year they, they got $15,000 from all of us vacant lot owners, $3,000 in management fees, 3800 in insurance. I mean, why are we insuring these vacant lots? And then we have to pay $3,156 to the Master Association, which there's like five different units. So they all, it's just such a big ripoff. And, and, and then this legal stuff, what is this? $2,000 for what? Other administrative expenses. And then, then we have the one for unit... Uh, Unit 7 here, there's 158 vacant lots. I own maybe like seven in there. Land insurance, 2,500. Legal, 2,000. Management fees. And then the Master Association fees, 1,800 each, almost 1,900. This one here is uh, Unit 9, there's 404 vacant lots. $24,000. And all this money goes to the Master Association, management fees, legal, insurance, $3,900. This is just so awful and terrible. 
that I have to pay all these HOA dues. Like, uh, it's like three thousand dollars a year for vacant lots. Twelve thousand unit ten, same business, and then unit ten south has uh, six thousand dollars for a budget, but they're all vacant lots. There's nothing going to happen out there, so we're paying all this money for for nothing. It's, and you got sucked into this. We we all there were there wasn't an HOA before, and they um, tricked us into this thing in order to sell these lots. But now that the economy is screwed up, nothing can sell, and there's no building out there. So why are we paying these HOA dues? It's just for the management and insurance. I mean, I don't have insurance on my vacant lots. I don't think anybody does that I know of. Uh, what, what's a raccoon going to trip and fall out there or something, or some illegal alien or something, and then sue everybody? Well, the Kennedy assassination was November 22nd, the anniversary for it, and the New York Times had this really stupid video on there uh, interviewing this guy uh, about the Umbrella Man. I mean, it, they could have done so much better than doing something silly and stupid. And this guy acted silly and stupid. I think they should have done talk. They should have talked about the uh, the bums they caught out back of the grassy knoll. These guys that looked just like E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis. They were Watergate burglars, and they um, they were both CIA agents and um, anti-Castro. They were very anti-Castro, and they, they found him out back of the grassy knoll right after Kennedy was assassinated. And somebody noticed in 1972 that here's what the tramp looked like, and that's what E. Howard Hunt looks like. And this is what the other tramp, there were three of them, and one of them looked almost exactly like this guy Frank Sturgis. And like, you know, they, they killed Kennedy and um, they killed Martin Luther King. Anybody that's a threat to Uncle Sam gets assassinated and or to the big business. Like, Kennedy was against big business and there's like a lot of people said that he would have got us out of the Vietnam War. <clears throat> this whole 9-11 thing was caused over these, uh, to get us involved in the war in Iraq. I mean, Iraq didn't have anything to do with this. Supposedly Bin Laden living in a cave orchestrated this this thing, but what really happened probably was it's just like Harvey Oswald was set up. He was a patsy and they, they his handlers told him to go pass out these anti-Castro Cuban pamphlets to try to blame it on um, pro-Castro or something, you know, blame it on Castro because Kennedy failed this Bay of Pigs things. And um, so these Cubans were really upset about them. Of course, the you know the mafia had their casinos down there, and that guy Frank Sturgis, he was operating a casino for one of the gangsters, uh, Mayor Lansky, I believe it was. There was and um, there was that guy Jack Ruby, who was the guy who shot Oswald, you know, to shut Oswald up, because Oswald would have told the truth that he was just set up. And uh, so they um, had to get rid of him. And like, uh, you know, our country has gone uh, downhill ever ever since actually World War II is when our country really started going down. A lot of people, you know, I mean, well, during the 50s, we had like a golden age and these people thought that communism was the biggest evil, but it doesn't make sense, you know, because like, who won World War II? The the Soviets did, the communists, the people that we had to build these bomb shelters for. It seems like we've always got to have an enemy. And Eisenhower warned us about this military-industrial complex that uh, would take over. And uh, and and so, like, um, <clears throat> you look at all the presidents. Like, Nixon was in Dallas uh, during the day before the assassination. Uh, allegedly for a Pepsi, Pex, Pepsi convention because he was a lawyer and he worked for Pepsi. And Pepsi, I think they were selling in Vietnam. You know, it was a big business. It's kind of funny if you go to Vietnam or Cambodia or Thailand or any of these places over there, you see these <clears throat> like Kentucky Fried restaurants. And just like in high school, they taught you that that one of our Navy men went into 
Tokyo or, and uh, force the Japanese to start trading with us. It's this globalist plutocrat problem that we have and they send the jobs over to China. Anything to save money these guys will do and they'll take the factories out of your town and, and make you um, a slave to these 30-year mortgages. With, uh, it's just slavery and the interest they charge. But uh, after World War II, then, uh, then things started going down because, um, well, they had, a, they had the, the boom after then. The 50s and 60s were pretty good. Uh, but um, they just didn't really think about the future. They tore the trolleys out and um, built these super highways like Los Angeles had a lot of nice trolleys. And that was all they tell you in high school that in order to sell automobiles, they got rid of uh, the trolleys and made everybody drive and commute. And then, then they could sell houses and they could cut up these little subdivisions and build these little ticky-tack places. And everybody has their little block. I mean, the whole cities are set up to make money, the, you know, to pack as many people in as you can. And so they... Um, didn't build cities like they do in Europe where you can take trolleys everywhere and not have to own a car. And so the, the, these capitalists, um, um, the karma in America is just like really bad because it's all because of money. And Jesus Christ said you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one that despise the other. And then the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and scoffed, and, and that's what it says. Jesus said in Luke 16. But like you know, Jesus was a revolutionary, and they didn't translate the Bible until King James and um, what was it, 1511. It's like the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible, and. Uh, you know, back then they didn't. People didn't realize that Jesus was a revolutionary. I think that if any preacher would say, "Yeah, you know, Jesus upset the tables of the money changers, and he told his disciples to not carry any money," then uh, people might um, think, "Hey, you know, money is is a stumbling block." It says that in uh, Ezekiel, and you know, I'm not that much of a Bible thumper, or you know, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't believe that, you know, confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead is going to save you. And that's the whole problem with the church today is that this St. Paul got in there. And uh, <clears throat> and he, I don't think that Jesus Christ would approve of St. Paul at all. And I don't call him saint because I believe he is. It's just I don't think you'd know who I'm talking about if I just said Paul. I could call him the Apostle Paul, but I don't even know what that word apostle means. He um, really, you know, like, he, Jesus Christ was the logos or the logic of God. If you look the etymology up of the word logic, you'll see it comes from logos. And in the book of John 1.1, 1, 1, it says that, that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. And so, like, um, you know, Jesus was the logic, and if, the, if it's not logical, then it's of the devil, and um, the truth will never die, it'll rise again. So I don't even know or believe that Jesus existed. And if he, he certainly didn't walk on water. And um, it, was, it could have been just some bunch of people that got together. And Well, they have this thing called the Gospel of Thomas, which is like a bunch of sayings, almost like Proverbs, attributed to Jesus. And so somebody could have taken those and put it to a story. And um, there, there, there were a lot of people, prophets and false messiahs, about the time that Christ allegedly uh, lived. So, and a lot of them got crucified. Like there was a guy named Judas the Galilean, and uh, he was a revolutionary, and so was Jesus. You know, he upset the tables of the money changers, and he rebuked all the religious hypocrites of the day, the people that like to dress up and pretend to be pious. And I always thought that these churches are just wasting space, and it's kind of like that thing I showed you at the very beginning in, in St. Paul's Cathedral in uh, London. These um, Occupy people are in there, and they should, they sh you know, I mean, like if Jesus was alive today, 
I mean, this whole building is empty, and they were saying that they aren't. The the church is saying, well, we're not making any money. You know, we can have tourists go in here, and you can actually walk up here. I got there. I was there once, and I got there too late, so I couldn't go up there. I was like five minutes too late. But uh, you know, Jesus Christ would uh, occupy the temple, of course. You know, and uh, that's why I don't. If a Messiah came back today, he he would rebuke he or she, or uh, whatever could like. I mean, like look how illogical this Islamic religion is. They have a pilgrimage to Mecca every year, and it's one of the biggest tourist traps in the world. And a lot of these people, they have to march around these pathways and throw rocks at these stones, which is symbolic of the devil. And uh, and, th- and they have a big block there, a big black rock box, and, I don't, you know, and they think that this thing is holy. And... Um, <clears throat> I guess you know the superstition is you have to walk around it a few times and you'll be blessed. And I keep wondering, you hear this stuff about if you know if you're a martyr, you're gonna there's you're gonna be seventy two virgins for you up in heaven. But like I mean, what happens to the women that are martyrs? I mean, what are, what are they gonna get up there? I'm sure they have something, but I mean, it, I mean, jeez, you know, that, and that's another problem with the Middle East. These Islamic people believe in having a lot of children so that like those are the most unstable places in the world it's like what's going to happen to them when they run out of oil and that that's another problem you know they tore out all these um, trolleys and now we have all these cars and people live too far away from work so that when this oil situation hits it's going to be really bad because um you know, it used to be what's good for GM is good for America, but like the with, without any oil, then uh, we're really going to have a problem. And like, there's a lot of articles in the news lately about this fracking. You know, people keep saying, "Oh, we're going to have so much oil up in Alberta or these other places," but up in Wyoming, there they were saying on the news that <clears throat> these this fracking method it it hurts the um, aquifer and you're going to get poisoned but anyway after um, you know we were supposedly going into Afghanistan to go out go after bin Laden but here's the thing that was in the New York Times and it explains they're going to have an auction of uh, oh dear this thing isn't working they're going to have an auction of of gold and uh, copper and things like that there the website for this there it goes. What happened? The website for this place is really bad, and uh, I'm gonna have to bring batteries with me next time. But uh, I should have my friend design a website for him. I'm gonna try to find it here for you. Where is it here? Uh, oh no, where is it? Hmm. Well, I can't find it. Maybe you can see. Oh, there it is. It's uh, it's mom.gov.af and I tried to navigate around there and I couldn't really get anything so there's a lot of minerals in Afghanistan plus <clears throat> like after we lost the Golden Triangle in Vietnam which is where they produced all the heroin it, it afterwards moved to Mexico but apparently that wasn't working too well or it was costing too much money, and so they, or maybe they wanted to flood Europe with it. They, I guess, well, it is a good idea. If they have it in Afghanistan, it's going to stupefy all the people around there. I hear that Iran and um, Iraq and Afghanistan, especially, has a really bad problem with heroin addiction. And like these people can't even afford to get off heroin there once they get addicted to it. And and these poor areas of the Soviet Union, ha- they have a really bad problem because that's where they smuggle it and um, up through there. And, and so another reason we went into Afghanistan was to start producing opium. And, uh, you know, opium stupefies. It, it makes you, uh, well, it's like, I don't know, I've never seen this movie called The Matrix, but 
it's probably what the blue pill is, you know, opium. And religion is like an opiate. And like if you, I went to one of these churches, I went to the Newman Center once many years ago, like maybe 15 years ago, and I watched the people when they were coming out, you know, and they have like if, at the Newman Center, they have these young women singing and, you know, it's very soothing and sweet. So like at the very end of the church, after they have their little wafers and drink of orange juice or not orange juice, but grape juice or, or wine, if you're lucky, then... Um, they come out like stupefied zombies. So like in the Matrix, the red pill was supposed to, you know, make you wise, I guess. And it's kind of like, you know, Adam and Eve, the um, tree of knowledge of good and evil. But uh, you just realize that this world, there is a lot of evil. And like, um, it's all because of money. And uh, they never... There's no real leader today. The government, if anybody is a threat to the government, they end up killing them. They, they killed John Kennedy because he wanted he wasn't going to get in, involved in Vietnam, and um, he was against big business. Kennedy uh, and his brother, as Attorney General, they prevented these mergers and acquisitions. And uh, if um, well, not like when they got rid of Hitler. Then um, the Soviet Union took over, you know, half of Europe. So who who really won that? Were, was America really against communism? I mean, was Hitler worse than Stalin? And um, you know, the whole reason for World War II, in the first place, was Poland, and Hitler wanted living space in the East. He wanted to colonize Poland, and eventually go into the Soviet Union and and conquer Bolshevism. And, and there's people that. You know, General Patton was, uh, he was furious. He, you know, he wanted to go and continue and to get Stalin and all that. But, um, you know, they they didn't. And, but like, the, the Poland was the whole cause of World War II. Because France and England had a treaty that if um, Poland was attacked, they would come to Poland's aid. And this whole um, Pearl Harbor thing was a setup. It was a setup to get the U.S. into the war. America, like, forced Japan to fire the first shot. Uh, we cut off their oil, or we put an embargo around them, and and then uh, they were forced to attack the United States, which got the United States into the war. And the whole war was, like, against, um, you know, it was national socialism versus British socialism versus Soviet socialism and Roosevelt socialism. But, and the workers in Germany had, had it pretty good. You know, Hitler and, well, Germany invented the Volkswagen and, and uh, Hitler built these huge um, spas for the workers to go on vacation. And he, he had, like, ships that the, the socialist workers there could, could work. I mean, was Poland better off under uh, Stalin? And, you know, Hitler's plan was to send the Jews to Madagascar. But once the war started, <clears throat> he had them rounded up and pushed them out into the Soviet Union. There's a lot of Jews got stuck behind the Iron Curtain and had their names changed. And a lot of people died in these concentration camps from typhus, which is caused by lice. And that's why they shaved the people's hair and gave them showers and made them change their clothes when they came into these concentration camps. So, so like during the epidemic of typhus up to 300 people a day would die so they needed to build these crematoria to sanitarily dispose of the dead and it takes a certain amount of time to cremate these bodies and like the six million figure is is a lie. It's a vast exaggeration of how many people really die. Anyway, my name's Raquel. You won't see me again until 2012, and I hope you have a happy new year and a Merry Christmas. And we need to tell the truth, and God bless you. Bye. Mm -hmm.